Hey everyone, Andrew here. This is part two of my three-part series on Laravel authentication. In this video, we are going to be discussing two packages, Fortify and Sanctum. Let's dive right in first with Fortify. We have this test application set up already as you can see, and it has a dashboard route. Now, the problem is that this route should only be accessible by me, someone who's logged into the application. This shouldn't be available to the public. So we need to add in a middleware guard to protect this route from unauthenticated users. If we head into our application's code, we can tack on this middleware method to the route get request, passing in auth. And now if we go back to our browser and refresh, we are met with an error that the login route isn't defined. This is because that middleware is trying to redirect us to a login screen, since we are currently not authenticated into the app. We could go back into the route's web file and add in a login route, or we could use Fortify. Taking a look at the documentation for it, Fortify is branded as a front-end agnostic authentication backend implementation for Laravel. Essentially, Fortify handles the routing and controllers necessary for all authentication actions, but doesn't include any front-end code. Because of that, most of the time you'll probably not use Fortify on its own. Instead, something like Breeze, which implements Fortify but with styled front-end components, might be more applicable. But anyway, let's see how this works. Heading back to our code base, let's open up a terminal and run Composer Require Laravel Fortify. After that finishes up, Artisan Vendor Publish with the Fortify Service Provider. And finally, Artisan Migrate to pull in the database changes. So now if we go back to the dashboard route that we were testing with earlier and refresh, we are seeing a different error. Login view response is not instantiable. This is a direct cause with how Fortify operates. Because there is no front end included, you have to not only create the markup and styles for it, but also initialize it in your application's code for each auth route. In order to do that, First, we'll need to open up our configapp.php file and scroll down to the provider's array. Adding in this Fortify service provider class at the bottom of the application service providers. Then, open up the app service provider class. And in the boot method, use Fortify login view and pass in a closure that returns the view we want to display for logging a user in. In this case, we'll just call it auth.login. The last thing that we have to do is create that actual view. I'm going to spare you the boring details and paste in a pre-made template that's built from the Breeze package. As you can see, we have a form, that's pacing to the login route. This route was automatically added in and registered when we installed the Fortify package. We also have fields for our email and password, as well as a button to submit the form. All pretty standard. Now if we refresh that page, we see our form. So let's try and log in. Well, we're presented with an error, which is good, because we don't have any users currently registered in our application. But see, Fortify did all of the behind the scenes work for us. All we did was build out a view and it handled the form submission, input validation, authentication checks, and errors that were returned back. Let's see what happens if we try to visit the registration route. We are met with a similar error that we got earlier. Register view response is not instantiable. Just like before, in our app service provider class, we'll call Fortify register view. And in the closure function, return view auth.register. Let's create that blade file and paste in our markup. Just like the login route, this pulls styles and layout from Laravel Breeze. We are posting this form to the register route, and we have inputs for a name, email address, password, and password confirmation. Let's go back to our browser, refresh, 
and see what that looks like. Perfect. Let's give this a test. Uh oh, I didn't type in the same password twice. Again, Fortify is handling all of the backend for us. All we did was just create a single view. Okay, our user is registered, and we were automatically authenticated into our application since we can see our guarded dashboard route now. If we try to go back to the login view, it should redirect us to a home route. But we want users who are logged in to go to the dashboard. That's a simple fix. Let's just open up the route service provider class and swap out this home constant value to slash dashboard. Now, if we try to visit that login route, we are directed to our dashboard view. What about logging out with Fortify? Well, if we were to try to visit the logout route, we are met with an error that a get request isn't supported for it. By default, logout requests in Fortify expect posts. That's pretty simple to implement though, so let's just pull up the dashboard blade template and add it in. Form action route logout method post. And we'll just add a button that says sign out. Refreshing our browser, let's test that out. Perfect. We are brought back to our landing page, just as expected. Also, now that we added a login and register route with Fortify, links to both of those are available in the top right corner. And we can use the login route to sign back in with the user that we registered earlier. Well, that's about it for Fortify. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go too further in depth in this video, but the package provides access to password resets, email verification, and even two-factor authentication. All you have to do is register the appropriate views with your application and provide some blade templates. Fortify's backend handles the rest. Let's switch gears now and move on to Laravel Sanctum. Swapping out the default welcome view for an app view that I've created, this is what our example application looks like. It's a view component that lets you pull in and display a list of blog entries, each with a title and some text. Checking out the source code for it, we have a div here that's looped over each entry and a button that fires a get entries method to grab them. A simple API request is what's used with Axios, and the entries data object is replaced by the response data. That endpoint is registered here, in Routes API. All it currently does, though, is return back all of the entry models in the database. But there's a problem with this. If we open up the Network tab and view the call that's being made to the entries endpoint, the data returned contains a user ID. Each entry is associated with a particular user. What I would like to do instead is be able to tailor this endpoint to a user who's logged in. I don't want just everyone to be able to see everybody else's posts, just those for a user who has logged into our app. And that's where Sanctum comes in. Born as a kind of alternative to the popular JWT auth package, it's a featherweight authentication system for single page applications, mobile apps, and token-based APIs. Essentially, it's a two-in-one package that lets you authenticate SPAs and their API calls with session cookies or your application endpoints through bearer tokens. We're going to give examples of both, but to start off with, we'll be using the SPA authentication. First things first, actually installing the package. Opening up a terminal window, we'll run composer require Laravel Sanctum. Once that's done, publish our vendor files, and then artisan migrate to add some database changes. Next, we'll need to add this ensure frontend requests are stateful middleware to the API middleware group. This, as its name implies, allows API requests coming from our SPA to contain session cookies that automatically authenticate and validate requests to our backend. Opening back up our view component, we'll have to make some adjustments in order to accomplish what we want. First, in our data object, 
we'll add a user attribute that's null by default, and a login object containing an email and a password. This will store the values for the form that our user will sign in with. Speaking of signing in, let's create a method called handle login next. It'll use Axios to post a request to the login route with our form data. And if that's successful, make a get request to the API user endpoint and use that data to replace our null user data object. Heading into the routes API file, we can adjust the middleware for that user route from auth API to auth sanctum. Using the created lifecycle method from view, we'll need to make a get request to the sanctum CSRF cookie route before any other API calls are made. This sets the CSRF token as a session cookie, protecting and allowing subsequent calls to our application endpoints to take place. Now let's create that login form. First, we'll wrap our current entries list in a div that's only displayed if the user data object is available. And if it's not, we'll display a login form containing email and password inputs. Setting the vModel attribute on both of those to the login data object properties. And a button at the bottom fires off the handle login method that we created earlier. Let's head back to our application in the browser, refresh, and test out what we've created so far. Okay, let's add in our user's email and password, and click sign in. Uh-oh, we are getting an error back in the console. The login route is returning a 404. That's expected though. We haven't created one in our application. If we open up our routes web file, we could add a route get request to login, but we could also just use the Fortify package that we just learned about. Installing it through Composer. Publishing the vendor files. Running the migrations and adding the provider to our config app file. We now have authentication routes ready to go. Since we're doing everything through API requests, we don't need any front-end views tied to Fortify. So let's open up its config file and scroll down to where it says views, setting that value to false. Before we go back and try again, let's make a quick adjustment to our component. Let's split out this API user call into its own method called getUser. And we're also going to call this during the created method after this CSRF cookie request has been resolved. This will ensure that our application responds properly if a user has already logged in, and their session is still active even after the page has been refreshed. We also need to go into the resources JS bootstrap.js file generated by Laravel to add in the following line. window.axios.defaults.withcredentials equals true. This tells Axios, the package that we're using to make API calls, to send the authentication session cookies in all requests automatically. And then in the route service provider class, we'll swap out the API middleware in our API routes to the web middleware so that session cookies are used throughout it. Let's head back to the browser and sign in with our test user. All right, perfect. We got our user and we're seeing the welcome screen instead of the login form. We can see the user data that was passed back to us through the API in the Network tab. Hitting Get My Entries displays a list of entries, but it does the exact same thing that it did earlier, showing all of them, not just the ones associated with my logged in user. No worries though, that's a pretty simple fix. Heading into the Routes API file, 
We can change the return for all entries to use request user entries. This returns the entries for the currently authenticated user. And this should use the auth sanctum middleware as well, so it's protected from unauthenticated users. Now if we refresh, we won't have to log in since our session cookie is still valid, and clicking Get My Entries displays just the entries associated with our user, which has an ID of 1. So that's authenticating and making calls with the SPA side of Sanctum. What about tokens? Let's go into our view component and create a new method called getToken. It's going to make a post request to API tokens create, passing in a token name attribute that I'm just going to hard code in as my token. When resolved, we're going to set a token data attribute to the response data token item returned back. Let's set that token item as blank in the data object for now. And add a second button under our get my entries button to fire off that new method. We'll also need somewhere to display that token, so an input with the disabled attribute here should work nicely. The model equals token, and perfect. Now we just need to create that API route it calls. In routes API, route post tokens create. And inside the closure function for it, token equals request user, our authenticated user, create token, passing in that token name that we hard coded into the view component. We'll be returning the token generated as part of an array with a token attribute. Just like our entries route, this is also protected with the auth sanctum middleware, so unauthenticated users can't access it. Finally, we'll need to open up our user model and add in this has API tokens trait to enable tokens to be used and generated for this particular model. Let's go back to our browser, refresh, and test this out. We are still signed in. Clicking Get My Entries works as expected. And if we click Get a Token, our input is filled with a token generated by Sanctum. We can test this out by using a program like Postman. A new get request to our test domain's API entries endpoint. And if we don't include anything in the headers, we are met with an unauthenticated message and a 401 unauthorized response code. But if we include the bearer token in the call, we get back a list of our user's entries, just like in our application. If we clear the session data for our site, we can test the login again. And everything is working just as expected. That's about it for this video. You've learned how to install, set up, and use Laravel Fortify and Sanctum authentication packages. You've learned how to create views for Fortify, use SPA authentication with Sanctum, and generate access tokens for API endpoints used by external applications. Huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors and everybody else who continues to support these videos. As always, if you have any questions about this or any other web development topics, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments or on my Twitter linked below. Thanks for watching.